Welcome to the Rise Above Project. I'm your host, Joe Peroni. I am a licensed marriage and family therapist, champion bodybuilder, and I've been a personal trainer for about 30 years. This podcast is about helping people with their emotional, spiritual, and physical fitness. I value strength, toughness, and truth. I despise complacency, the victim mentality, and following the herd. If you find my work to be valuable, please subscribe to my channel and tell a friend. Let's talk about self-sabotage, and if you can believe it, Scooby-Doo. First, I want to tell you a story about running for school president when I was in sixth grade. When I was in sixth grade, at 11 years old, I was nominated for a school president. I thought I was going to get out of it, but another kid decided to second the motion. I ran against another boy named Carl and a girl named Mary. We actually had to campaign, and that included a speech in front of the entire student body. We had to do some type of entertaining presentation, and we were allowed to make posters and give out buttons for a week. I did the speech, but I was scared to death. I don't really remember it, other than trying not to promise something that I couldn't deliver, such as ending school one hour earlier or having three hour gym classes. My presentation was great because my sister was able to get a few of her cheerleader friends to do a few cheers for me. It was a great way to get some of the girls to vote for me. My buttons were actually yellow pieces of tape with the words silent but deadly written on them. And it referred to me because I was shy and quiet, but at the time I was also known as the strongest and best athlete. But of course, the young boy, Silent But Deadly, had another meaning, which added to the popularity. Over time, we were handed ballots to vote. I think it took about maybe a week or two of a campaign. So I sat for a long time by myself wondering if I should actually vote for myself. And I was extremely conflicted, which does not seem to make sense, but I think it will after today's show. After struggling for a long time, I decided not to vote for Mary and I voted for myself. The only reason I voted for myself was because of the work that my mother, sister, and friends did for the campaign. Turns out Mary and I tied for first and Carl was third. If I didn't vote for myself, I would have lost and it would have been only my fault. And you could have called it self-sabotage. The runoff was between Mary and I. All the boys who voted for Carl decided to vote for me, and I ended up winning. I was the school president, and that's the story. At the end of the show, I'm going to answer the question, why would a young boy have such a difficult time voting for himself for school president? Try to keep that in mind as I discuss what is known as self-sabotage. This is an important subject because self-sabotage may be standing in the way of your progress. It's also important because I've had and I've heard many explanations about self-sabotage from many supposed gurus like Jordan Peterson that lack insight and validity. He believes people sabotage themselves because it's easier to go through life as a failure and that most people realize that they are wretched, useless, and don't want any responsibility. But in my humble professional opinion and experience, these thoughts do nothing to help people. It adds unnecessary pain to people's lives. And actually, it's just plain wrong. Additionally, it is now socially acceptable to use the term self-sabotage as a badge of honor. As in, I could be the world's greatest musician, athlete, or anything else I want to be, but I just get in my own way. I could be successful, I could take care of my family, donate millions of dollars to the less fortunate, but I'm afraid of my greatness, so I choose to stay on the couch and play video games. The truth is, is that most people make excuses for not reaching their potential, and they fool themselves into believing it's easier on their ego to fail by not trying than to fail after giving it their best shot. They are voluntarily looking for a built-in excuse to preserve their self-worth. Technically, there is no such thing as self-sabotage, although it seems like there is, and here's why. There are competing parts within every person. The ideal self is the part that is conscious. It's the persona or the facade. It is who you want to be, and it's the part of you that you put out into the world. 
the ideal self says, I'm going to lose 20 pounds so I can look and feel more attractive. The ideal self says, I'm going to post positive memes on Facebook to show everyone that I'm working out and eating right. The ideal self considers being bold, taking risks, and wants change. The real self is the part that is unconscious. It is who you think you really are. The real self craves safety, security, and has a fear of the unknown. It's passive and agreeable, a people pleaser, and feels comfortable being in the herd. It follows life scripts, core beliefs, and negative self-talk. Self-sabotage is when the needs of the real self override the needs of the ideal self. The antidote for self-sabotage is to align the real and ideal selves. The two must be congruent. Self-sabotage is a symptom that gives us a message that there are deeper issues at play. It gives us a chance to explore and heal ourselves, but this is not easy. According to Carl Jung, the unconscious makes most of the decisions. Until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life, you will continue making the same mistakes, and you will call it fate. The unconscious mind is filled with interjections, cognitive distortions, and believes it has an identity. There is always an emotional and behavioral gravitational pull towards what is familiar, which attempts to prevent us from taking the road less traveled. Every time we repeat mistakes, we are given the chance to correct and repair. I would invite you to consider that there is no such thing as self-sabotage, even in the most extreme of situations. People who choose behaviors that hurt themselves don't feel that they can do or deserve any better. Having low expectations from low self-esteem is an ill-fated attempt at self-preservation. That's not sabotage. People who choose suicide have come to the conclusion that they are helpless and hopeless and they are making the best decision to end their pain. They also choose suicide to end the burden on other people's lives, which is sacrificial, that's not sabotage. The inner or real self believes it is acting in your best interest because it's closer to who you believe you are. Thus, its role is as your savior, not your saboteur. It is not self-sabotage. It is unconscious self-protection. Samuel Butler has said, self-preservation is the first law of nature. The failures that we experience from our own will should be a realization that we have moved too fast and have tried to perform a spiritual bypass to avoid our inner selves. More work is needed to be congruent. We need to be open to the thought that our inner self or our inner child is still screaming out to be validated and that our unresolved traumas are the root cause of our issues. Poet Walt Whitman said it perfectly, the child is the parent of the adult. I want to say that again just because it's so brilliant. The child is the parent of the adult. Any time we procrastinate or otherwise shoot ourselves in the foot, we are left clues that our ideal and real selves are in conflict. So here's a question. Who is the real you? Now this is where it gets tricky. After we have followed the clues, we will realize that the issue with the real self is difficult to find. The self we think we actually are. In the Scooby-Doo series, the clues are followed until they find who they think the criminal is. But the criminal is always disguised as a ghost, a demon, or some type of monster. Then the mask is removed to reveal who the perpetrator truly is. In this case, we must realize that our inner self or saboteur is just a mask and it's made up from our caregivers and our environment when we were naked, needy, and dependent. The resistance we feel 
is the internalization of our caregiver's neurotic fears and anxiety. Additionally, we are made up of interjections. Introjections are the unconscious ad adoption of the ideals, attitudes, and expectations of our caregivers. The projections of others are worn by us, and we can receive these messages verbally or non-verbally. These can be positive or negative, but if the problem is self-sabotaged, then the projections were negative. In order to stop self-sabotaging ourselves, we need to unmask what we had believed was our real self and have the courage to discard the beliefs that were given to us. Children look for their world to define them, but we are not children anymore. We have the responsibility to define ourselves. Again, the great poet Walt Whitman, from New York, by the way, he has said, it is your job to re-examine all that you have been told and taught and dismiss all that insults your soul. Let's go full circle here. Back to the question, why did I have a difficult time when I was only 11 years old to vote for myself as school president? This is the answer. I was working with the projections from my family and my environment, which included good things happen to other people. What makes you so special? Only a conceited person would want to be the leader. You need to be humble. Don't tell people that you are better than them. Good people always put others first. I think your head is probably getting a little too big for your shoulders. Now, not all of these messages are negative, but they definitely can confuse a young person when they're trying to excel and to win. Because if you're trying to win, you can't always put other people first. I realized from an early age that I wanted to fight back and I wanted a different path. These beliefs were not mine and I've spent most of my life giving them back and I'm still not even done yet. It's time to find the real you before the world got a hold of you when you were vulnerable. The moment one is able to greet their inner child, validate their inner child, and accept their inner child without denying its pain is when the real healing and rebirth begins. Then you have the full power to decide who you are. You define yourself. I am hardworking. I am strong. It's okay to stand out from the crowd. I have a voice, but that's me. I challenge you to find out who you are. Because once that journey begins, self-sabotage does not exist. I'm Joe Peroni from the Rise Above Project. Thank you for listening. Please subscribe and tell a friend.